Let's talk about this. Attitude. Attitude. I want to I want to bring before I go into attitude, I want to see where I put this in this. But I want you to understand and before we get into, but it's the rule of connection. And you guys are familiar with what the golden rule is? You remember the golden rule? You the learned it when you were a little kid, right? Do unto others as you oh. have them do unto oh. you. The golden rule, right? You're thinking of those little golden books. Remember the golden books? Like the little book. But the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's like the, the rule of life. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Right? I mean, uh, if you ever want to learn it, that's what you learn as a little kid. Right? To get along, right? Treat, you want people to treat you nice, you know what? Treat them nice. Doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's a good rule to live in life. Well, sales has a golden rule. ABC. Well, that's always be closing, but until I get to that ABC <laughs> point, I gotta abide by this rule because this is something as salespeople, we forget. Because this rule is so important that every day when you wake up, when you get out here, when you get on the phones, this is the rule that you need to set for yourself. Here's what it is. People do business with people that they like. Is anybody going to say, oh, that's wrong. I usually do business with people that I hate. In fact, if they displease me, I give them more money. <laughs> if I've been treated rudely by someone, I'll say, sure, take my money because my self-esteem is that low. Wow. No. People do business with people that they like. If you don't like you, they're probably not going to do business with you. You know why? Because they have choice. Let's do it on a base scale. How many of you guys ever go out to eat? Huh. All right, it's something we can all relate to. You go out to eat, and you have a server. That's just awful. Not only are they awful, they're rude. They're not, they're not friendly. They make you feel like, why am I here? This is the worst restaurant experience ever. Your check is there before dessert is even finished. Come back to that later. Huh. Are you, you going to leave that person a tip? More than likely. No. Yeah. Are you going to leave him a 20%er? Probably like a 5%er. You're going to leave him the minimum amount. Why? Because you don't like them. They had one but job. You, right? But here's the deal. What about that? You ever have that server, right? Great attitude. Personality was amazing. Right? It may have been the first couple weeks on the job, and boy, they messed up some things. But they were attentive to you, right? They were great. You were talking to them. You get to see them as a person. You're going to tip that person more than you are the person who may have had flawless service but treated you horribly. Because you like them. Guys, sales is relationship-based. It's 100% relationship-based. Which is why the connection is so important. If we can't establish a relationship with that customer, it's done. If we can't establish a relationship with 80% of the people that pick up the phone and call us, out of 100 people, 80 of them, out of 10, 8 of them, if we can't establish that relationship, it's done. So, attitude is one of the things that's going to affect that greedy. Go ahead. So, the next thing we're going to talk about, everything that, that goes into what makes, makes the connection process, we've already established that people buy for people that they like. It takes 20 seconds for them to make a decision. So, if we're going to build a connection, we have to look at all the components in the connection phase. And, and the first thing we're going to talk about is attitude. Because Attitude, let me ask you this. Can you tell if someone is in a good mood or a bad mood on the phone? Yep. yep. Right? Absolutely. And your attitude will determine your success and failure with these customers. Let me get this, guys. Remember I said your customers paint a picture of you? Let me get it. Your customers can see you on the other end of the phone when you roll your eyes at them. They can see that. They can feel it. <laughs> yeah, they know it. We are on the other end of the phone, you have a customer and you're just like, ah, right? And you just mouth, this person. They hear it. Oh, I didn't hear anything, because I didn't say anything. Well, yeah, they heard it. Just as if you did it right in their face. That's why I like, when you do face-to-face -face sales, you have to be focused. You can't go up to a customer and you're like, 
Oh, man, really? Seriously? What a stupid question. I mean, you could, but they're not going to buy from you. So your attitude, man, you have to make sure that it's in check. Because your customer, they can, they can tell. And with attitude is this, guys, you control it. You control your attitude. It's the one sales tool that you have that's the hardest to master. Right? You won't be successful in sales. It's not going to happen if you have a negative attitude. And in fact, I'm going to take a step further. You're not going to be successful in life. I, I used to do a, a longer, longer talk about attitude. But it's just like, you know what? It goes in one ear out the other. I'm going to tell you this. I can't fix you. I don't want to fix you. <laughs> you you, you got to fix yourself. You got to fix your attitude. You don't like where you're at in life? Take a look in the mirror. Boom. Because let me tell you, it's not like there's a conspiracy of people making us have a horrible life. It's not like we have a cabal, right, following us around. Like we're the character in a movie we didn't know about. We're going to make Jesus' life horrible. Right? Oh. <laughs> we're going to make his life bad. Right, hey, Jesus is not. If we want to look at the situations we're in, we pretty much constructed our own prison, our own mansion, our own house. We have control, but it starts right here. Because if we can't master right here, everything else falls into play. Got that negative rule, man. Most people I mean, that negative fear. attitude. It's fear-based. Yeah. We don't want to fail. Most people don't. You know, it's fear-based because we base things off the past anyway. We have to let go of that stuff because it's not moving us forward. That attitude, man, remember the golden rule of, that I told you about? People buy from people that they like? Well, if you have a negative attitude, are they going to like you? And you know what the sad part is? They're so used to that when it comes to service. They're used to a negative attitude. They're used to somebody who isn't going to pay attention to them. They're used to somebody who's going to give them shoddy customer service. That's what they're used to. So if you go in with that type of attitude, guys, did you shatter that illusion? You completely shattered that illusion because you're no longer Triton, or you're no longer Luminous, excuse me. You're no longer Trivac. You're no longer that company. You are just a person who works on the phones, and they don't respect that. Decisions made off of respect. When you come to work and you work and deal with customers for a living, guys, you have to make sure that your attitude is in check. You have to do that. Like I give people props who come in and they have other issues going on. You have surgery, but you're here. You know what that tells me? You want it. Committed. You're committed to do it. You do whatever it's going to take to push it through. I love that. You have to decide what's your, what, what's your line. Do you want this to be like every other job that you've had? Or would you like this to be different? All these guys are here for different reasons. Everyone has goals that they're here to achieve. But if your attitude isn't right, this is going to be just like every other place. If you've gone from place to place to place to place, stop. Think about it. What is the only common factor that all those places have? It isn't everything. It's you. And your attitude is going to determine that. Uh, another thing about attitude, and I see this all the time, and, and we let outside influences affect how we're going to perform here in the office. You ever hear that sales rule? Leave your problems out the door. It's, become, it's almost cliche. Leave your problems out the door. Who's heard that? Heard it? Every place you work at, right? Leave your problems out the door. <laughs> Right? But it is one of those things that goes in one ear out the other. But it's not cliche. It's true. It's just hard. It's, it's very, really I'm hard telling you, do. it's super hard. Yeah, it's the... Sometimes you have a tendency, you bring in outside influences because you can't let it go. But let me tell you about what we do, what makes it difficult. If you're worried about what's going on out there, how can you focus on the task at hand, which is connecting and selling your customers? 
It's very difficult to. Can you engage with a customer if you're focused about 90 other things? You're half listening to them. You're not really paying attention to them. You're not connected to them. You guys are professionals. I mean, we are paying you to do a job. That makes you a professional. I saw a bunch of hands go up. And I'm like, I want to make 18 bucks an hour. I make $16 an hour. I want to make that big money. I want to make 25 bucks an hour. I want to make over $30 an hour. It's possible. But if your focus isn't here, it's going to be impossible. Leave those problems outside. You know, a lot of the problems that you have and that you're focused on, we can help you fix. Because a lot of your problems aren't caused by an abundance of something. A lot of your problems are caused by a lack of something. What would that something be, Matt? Uh, Money. There you go. I just heard you. See it? He sounds just like you. I was going to say <laughs> lack of no, no, no. I, 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 I would say, uh, I would say money. money. Yeah, I would say money. Really money. Well, it should be money. Because let me ask you this. You would have woke up today, right? You would have checked your phone and you would have looked in your account and you had an additional $2.7 million in that account. A lot of your problems would be solved, wouldn't they? All of them. All of them, right? <laughs> Where's rent coming? Well, I got that taken care of. I got rent for the next five years. Go on, take care of. I've got you going to a new place. Car payment, take care of. Utility bills, take care of. Food money, market, take care of. Good but job. that didn't happen. If that would have happened, you probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> probably wouldn't have gotten a phone call from you. <laughs> but it's a lack of this, not by an abundance of it. So if we need this, if we need that money, we have to focus. We have to be engaged. We have to connect. We're focused on outside problems. Our negativity seeps into our calls. We start to create bigger problems. You know what those bigger problems are? Lower sales, lower commissions, lower commissions, and now you're stressed outside. Now you have stress inside because now your boss is on you. Now your performance isn't good here. You think it'll be like, hey, happy day, good to see ya. Oh, you keep on doing mediocre. That's fantastic. <laughs> keep on performing below average. You're gonna love it, right? No. Now you're gonna be like, hey, we gotta, we gotta talk to you about this. Now you're stressed out at work. You're stressed out at work and you're stressed out at home. Sounds like. Sorry. Got distracted. Leave your problems. <laughs> Leave your problems outside because they're going to be there at the end of the day to greet you guys. They're not going anywhere. Look at this place like a little vacation. Look at this place as a way to escape. Leave them outside. Don't sweat that stuff. All right. Pause it.